Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode 14 of the Twitter application series. In today's video, let's discuss the importance of how to properly handle network errors and JSON errors inside of our applications. So this should be very useful for you guys if you are also developing an application that uses a lot of network calls to some kind of REST service. So before we get into how to do that, let me go over exactly where we left off in the last episode. All right, so inside of Xcode right here, I'm on the service file. I'm just going to run the application to show you what we're rendering out uh, using this Twitter slash home API call. And we get a set of users up here and also a set of tweets at the very bottom. So that's very good. Um, the question now is, what do we do when we encounter some kind of error? Perhaps the user is in a tunnel and you can't reach this Twitter slash home API. In other words, you're going to encounter a 404, a page not found, which is this right here. And to simulate this, I'm going to use a home one instead of just home. And uh, let's see what happens if I change that to home one instead. And running this right now, uh, it's going to render out a blank uh, collection view controller, which has just this blue, uh, blue background like that. Down inside of the console, you get the JSON error printed out right here fail to fetch JSON, which is here. And you actually print out the uh, error object as well inside of your console. So what we want to do in the case of one of these network errors is to show a, uh, show a error message label to the user that is kind of meaningful. And right here it says, apologies, something went wrong. Please try it again later. So that's how you would notify the user and kind of tell them if something uh, bad has happened inside of the application so that they can, you know, maybe refresh if they want to do so. All right, so to do uh, all of this, we really need to first start off with something a little bit easier. And I'm going to show you guys how to first add in this error message label inside of our application, which is this blank screen right here. All right, let's get started by going to Home Data Source Controller. And why don't we create this very uh, cool error message label right here. Let's say a let error message label be of type, it's plain old UI label. And we're gonna create this programmatically. Hopefully you guys are comfortable with this by now. And let uh, label equals this new instance of UI label. Label.text will equal this string of apologies, uh, something went wrong please try again later and to center this text you can just say label that text alignment equals dot center like that and returning this label finally executing this block giving us this label that we can use inside of view to load so i'm just going to add in this uh, view as a sub view of the main view controllers view to do that view add sub view like so and error message label and I'm going to call this new method uh, called fill superview like that and run the application. So fill superview is hopefully pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and it's a LBTA method call, which comes from the LBTA components pod and allows you to just simply anchor everything from the top left, right, and bottom of the parent view, which will render out this guy right here. Now to get it to not truncate with the dot, dot, dot ellipses, uh, error message label can be modified and configured with number of lines equal to zero, causing it to word wrap to the next line. Uh, the reason why the label is centered vertically is that's kind of how UI labels behave. By default, it just centers vertically within the entire uh, bounds of the label object. So that's what you get. And now you kind of need to decide when to show this error message label. For example, to illustrate this point, I want to change back the Twitter slash home uh, API call to hit the proper Twitter slash home. And it's going to give me back the, uh, the objects that I need to render. And however, in this case, I also still see the error message label. So somehow inside of home controller, you need to modify fetch home feed to be a little bit smarter and a little bit more intelligent in figuring out when an error has occurred. So let's start by modifying the completion block to know about this error. And to do that, let's 
command click inside of fetch home feed and you see this completion block right here um, you can modify it to include a second error parameter like that and uh, doing that will cause this line to break right here so in a successful call to the api we'll just pass back a nil object for the error right here and you can't really do that until you change it to an optional because uh, only optionals are allowed to be null which is what that means and inside of the error block right here we need to call the completion block as well with a nil home data source and the actual error object that you get back from the tron uh, library call which gives us an error and we're going to make home data source optional as well so that we can call it with a nil object like that so i'm going to remove this right here and uh, if you try to run this you can't exactly run it and the reason is because we've modified this completion block right here this fetch home feed and it really needs to be called a little bit differently instead so it needs to be called with this, hit enter, and you get two parameters here now. So this will be home data source, and this will be the error. And uh, I need to check if the error is uh, an actual object like this. And you can say print, uh, see, home, see, home data source controller, error fetching JSON. And I'm going to use the actual error object like that return if we get the error, otherwise set the self data source to be home data source like that. And let's remove the bad fetch home feed call like so. Now running this, we're still going to see the stacked error message label on top of the home data source controller cells, which still looks like this. And what we can do now is whenever we catch this error right here, we can just simply set the visibility of this error label. So to do that, we'll say self.errorMessageLabel is hidden equals to true like that. And I'm going to comment out the, uh, the printing of the error just to make it a little bit easier. And that's going to hide the error message label whenever we successfully fetch the, uh, the JSON objects. And the problem now is that we need to also, um, or I believe this needs to be false instead. So this property is always a little bit counterintuitive. So is hidden is going to be false. So we unhide it whenever we have an error uh, coming from the network. And what we can do to fix this problem right here, you see this error message shows up by default in the beginning. So to default it to be hidden, I'll set it to be uh, hidden is hidden equals true at the very uh, default creation step of that label. So running this now, we don't see anything at the very beginning and if we have a success, we uh, don't show the error message label at all. So let's go back to service right here. And I'm going to add back the one for the Twitter slash home endpoint. And it's going to show us the error message label whenever we hit this error right here. So see, it shows a blank screen and it hits that breakpoint at line 40. Hit continue, we get the error message label uh, shown inside of the screen. Uh, to get rid of this little nuisance of a warning, just use an underscore if you don't really need access to the error object like that, and then we should be okay. So that's kind of how you handle this error that we call a network error. And there is a second use case which you probably uh, might not be so aware of right now. And whenever we hit these API calls, we can encounter something else that is sort of a invalid formatted JSON as well. So to kind of show you guys what that looks like, I'm going to go back to Chrome right here. And this endpoint I've uh, set up for you guys, and it's called home with error or Twitter slash home with error. And the user object looks like this. It's just a pure string. And let's go back to the code for this fetch home feed guy, it uses a home data source object. And we're creating all of this stuff using a user's array object. So we're assuming that the users from this JSON call is an array, which looks like this right here. So it looks like an array of users. And we are making that assumption. So the question is, what happens if that assumption is incorrect? Well. I'm going to show you guys exactly what that looks like by hitting this URL right here. So let me just copy that. 
go back to service and uh, change this home one to home with error. So some of you guys can probably guess what's going to happen. And uh, basically we're going to encounter a error inside of our JSON parsing logic. And uh, the logic tells us that unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. And it brings us to this line right here. So what's happening is we're trying to unwrap this user's JSON array uh, with this exclamation bang operator. And because the array of users is not an array, uh, it's hitting, it's giving us a fatal crash like this. So to fix this issue, uh, we really should never use this bang operator if we can avoid it. And we can, we can do a simple guard statement to avoid the bang operator. So I'm going to show you what happens if we use a guard up here. And uh, we need to end it with an else like that. And because this else case really needs to do some kind of return to get out of this entire uh, bit of logic, what I'm going to do is, is uh, instead of return, I'm going to throw an error like that. And it's going to be constructed with NS error using this domain right here. And this parameter, this domain, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give it my domain like that. And the error code, or the code itself, can be whatever you specify it to be. Uh, it's only, it's kind of arbitrary and it's meaningful only to you, what you set it as. And inside of user info, you need to specify some kind of dictionary, which I'll use. Uh, and that's localized description key. And here is the actual error that I'm going to write. So users uh, not valid from JSON, or not valid in JSON rather. And that's kind of the error message that I need to throw. So to fix this, you can get rid of the bang right now. And uh, the reason why you can get rid of it is because this will successfully unwrap your objects uh, if it is what you expect it to be, which is an array in our uh, use case here. And running this right now, what do you expect to see? So it's going to hit line 19, hopefully, <laughs> if everything is set up correctly. So it's this right here, I'm hit continue. And then we get this message label being printed out. So that's pretty good. Uh, what I really need to do, uh, in addition to fixing the user's bang operator, is also uh, get rid of this bang as well. So you can do a couple of things here. Um, what we will want to eventually do is make this a little bit more concise. But I'm going to show you what this looks like uh, by typing it all out first. So apply this guard statement to this tweet JSON array, just like what we did up here. And uh, I'm going to throw this error as well. And let's construct it, just typing it out like this. Like that, code of one again. Uh, let's see, NS, the localized description key. And this error is a little bit different. The tweets array, if it's not valid, will print out that statement like that. And uh, we can get rid, of, get rid of this bang operator down here. And everything is going to be okay. Uh, so assuming that your JSON file that you get from your REST call is properly formatted, you can um, catch the errors this way and everything should be okay. So if I change this back to uh, just plain old home, um, hopefully the controller with the collection view will render out the objects for us properly, which kind of looks like this right here. So everything is working properly for me. Uh, the thing about this, let's say go back to home and data source, the thing about this uh, style of catching your errors is that if you have too many errors, then this uh, error catching gets a little bit too convoluted. So what I kind of prefer to do is to reduce all of these GAR statements into just one statement. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that by cutting this right here and pasting it into here. So I'm detecting for both uh, non-properly formatted cases. Then so get rid of that guard statement. And this guy right here, I'll just make it a little bit more generic. Uh, see, parsing JSON was not valid or whatever you want to give your error message. That's going to be propagated up a little bit later on. So now I can run this and your guard statements will be a little bit cleaner. Uh, you won't have too many things to deal with later on when you have to modify this. 
So that's what you get. And uh, let's see, going back to service file right here, I want to change it back to the home with error. So the question is, how do I differentiate between the network call of perhaps a status code error 404 and then the other network call when I'm actually hitting a JSON error like this right here, or this rather, home with error. So to kind of, uh, to kind of tell what kind of error object this, this error guy is right here, you can do a couple of things with this Tron library. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the way of kind of detecting what's going on. So if you say let error equals uh, error as this API error guy, and then uh, you need to specify a generic like that. And the reason why I know it's a JSON error is because that's what I gave it as the API request like that. And once you have this, you can say error dot, uh, let's see, error is right here. Uh, let's see, where is the response is right here. You can get the status code like that. So that's kind of how you tell uh, what's going on. So with this little bit of knowledge, what I can do is I can further propagate this error back up to the home controller. And uh, let's see what that kind of looks like. So let me remove that and go back to home data source controller. So I'm gonna modify this message to be a little bit different based on the type of error that I get. So I'm going to change this underscore back to this error guy right here. And uh, down, let's see, down here, I'm going to say if, see, if let, uh, let API, see, error equals error as API error with this JSON error, see, we can't access JSON error directly because it's a subclass of service like so. Uh, and then now we can do this in here. I'm going to say, uh, if the API error, API error, lowercase, dot response dot status code is not equal to 200, then I'll say perhaps self dot error message label dot text equals uh, status code was not 200 right here and a return statement like so. So I don't think I need this return statement actually. So I'm gonna to try to run this, right? And you won't be able to see this because the status code is actually a valid 200 and we're getting a JSON error instead. So you don't see this message. So instead of hitting home with error, let's go back to hitting home with the one guy. So that's going to give us a status code that's not 200. And more specifically, it's going to render a 404 error instead, giving us status code was not 200. So this is most likely going to occur when you're under a tunnel and you get a 404. So you need to modify this message to be whatever appropriate message uh, it should be. Okay, so this is how you would easily modify your completion blocks to properly handle network errors and also JSON errors inside of your application. Uh, remember, if you wanna to download today's uh, project, you can find the source code in the description down below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, properly handle generics inside of your application. And uh, generics are very fun and a very important topic inside of Swift. All right, that's going to be it for me. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.